Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Wednesday, March 6, 2013. Well, as we had uh, speculated yesterday, Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez has indeed died. He died last night after a two-year battle with cancer at the age of 58. This ends a 14-year rule of Venezuela. Venezuela is the 13th largest oil producer in the world, responsible for uh, slightly under 3% of the global oil output. The uh, new president is going to be the current vice president, Nicolas Maduro. The armed forces have pledged to support him, as well as to, to support the Constitution. There's going to be a new election within 30 days. There are hopes now in Washington and in Europe that uh, the new regime might be a little bit easier to work with than the rather uh, mercurial uh, Chavez. The European Commission has fined Microsoft $730 million for failing to provide clients with a choice of internet browsers, as Microsoft had promised to do. The Commission said this morning it was the first time it was sanctioning a company for the failure to satisfy a previous complaint, making this, quote, a very serious infringement. In uh, uh, 2009, the Commission required the company to offer clients a choice of web browsers all the way up to 2014 after complaints that it was only providing access to Internet Explorer. However, an investigation found that the rollout of Windows 7 in the period May 2011 to July 2012, about 15 million clients had access only to IE. Microsoft has acknowledged the failure, which it put down to technical problems. That's a pretty big technical problem. There's a big storm belting the eastern U.S. now. It hit Chicago yesterday, canceled about 1,100 flights at Midway and O'Hare Airport and dumped 10 inches of snow. It's closed the U.S. federal government down in Washington, which might not be a bad thing, closed school systems from Richmond up to Baltimore, and it's scheduled to hit New York with about 7 inches of snow later this afternoon. Flights going into and out of Washington airports, Reagan National and Washington Dulles, uh, have often been canceled. Metropolitan Life's CEO, Steve Kandarian, said that MetLife should not be designated a systemically important financial institution by regulators because if it failed, it wouldn't threaten other companies. He said, we don't think we're systemically important. We don't have the interconnectedness. If we go down, no other company would go down. The Financial Stability Oversight Council, created by the Dodd-Frank bill, uh, has to choose companies to be subjected to increased scrutiny as systemically important. AIG, Prudential, and General Electric's finance unit are all undergoing the process now. Uh, Kandarian said that if MET was named systemically important, it would hurt both customers and shareholders. According to uh, testimony back in May by a MetLife executive, if in fact the largest American insurers are deemed to be systemically important, they would either have to raise the price of the products they offer, reduce the amount of risk they take on, or stop offering certain products altogether. Last week we reported that Lancashire Insurance Company in Bermuda had uh, formed Lancashire Capital Management to explore insurance linked securities opportunities and they had named uh, Simon Fashone to be the CEO of it. Well, today Fashone is gone. Uh, he's leaving to pursue other opportunities. Lancashire CEO Richard Brindle is himself taking over day-to-day -day management of the new venture. They are wishing Fashone all of the best. Well, here's an interesting question. Um, if you were a billionaire and you felt slighted on the Forbes uh, richest 500 people in the world, what would you do? Well, if you were uh, Saudi Prince Alawid bin Talal, um, you would claim that uh, Forbes systematically exaggerated, actually you would claim in response to claims from Forbes that he had systematically exaggerated his wealth, you would sever ties with Forbes. Forbes reported in its annual billionaires list that Alawid was worth only $20 billion. He claims he's worth $30 billion. The list was published on Monday. It ranked Alawid as the world's 26th richest man which isn't so bad, but Alawid said that the uh, Forbes list has an intentional bias against Middle East investors. He is going to continue to cooperate with the rival rich list put out by Bloomberg, which ranks him uh, 10 places up at 16, with some $28 billion. Alawid is 58 years old. He's a nephew of the Saudi king. He owns large stakes in Apple, Citigroup, News Corp, Facebook, and Twitter as well as a luxury hotel chain. Well, those are really high rent problems, aren't they? 
That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.